Hey guys, in this video I'm checking out a brand new mini gimbal from Zayun. They sent this little thing out to me and it looks very interesting. This might be one of the smallest stabilized setups you can use on your A6000. So shout out to Zayun. But before I get into how it's packaged and talk about the gimbal, I want to say a couple of things. First of all, shout out to Sony because they sent me to Condo 3.0, which is their annual event where they invite a whole bunch of photographers and you can go out and try new gear and new lenses and network and eat a lot of great food. So thank you so much, uh, Sony. You'll see some of the shots that I show you in the sample images, but I uh, just got back from that last week. It was amazing, a ton of fun down in Bend, Oregon. Um, so anyway, let me jump into this review. So this is the box that this gimbal comes in. Very compact for a gimbal. It does have plastic wrap on it, so let me take that off first. So the first thing you get is user manuals in this nice little pouch case for this little gimbal. It just has a tab. And wow, look at how compact that is. Here's what the gimbal looks like, Crane M2 branded. Very lightweight, plastic body, rubberized texture. And then this is metal. A little collapsible mini tripod here. You get some sort of strap, USB-C charging cable. This looks like a phone mount because it expands like that. Has some tension maybe for um, clipping your phone and using this gimbal with a cell phone. The ever important tripod mount screw and the very compact mounting plate. So this is a very nicely packaged, I mean, you can see the case very compact it would be a piece of cake to carry this thing around in a backpack you just put it all in there and it will be very well protected so this is how compact the setup is right now i have my a6400 mounted on this little gimbal i have an external microphone on it uh, with a wind muff because it's windy today and i am using the kit lens on this setup which i know i know is not ideal but I tried using a bunch of different lenses and unfortunately this gimbal, while it is very small and cool, it's not really strong enough to support a heavier lens than the kit lens. So for those of you who have owned or have seen a Zayun gimbal before, this is very familiar stuff. So you have a little screen, it shows you the mode that you're in right now, I'm in pan follow. I can hit this little M button and I can switch to full lock. I can switch to point of view mode and then I can go back to pan follow. Very simple and straightforward. Shows you a battery indicator. Fun fact, I charged this when I got it. I've been using this little gimbal for about a week and a half, maybe almost two weeks and it's still fully charged. So very efficient when it comes to batteries, which are built in, there's no slot for removing them. You have a toggle switch here to move the camera up, down, left, and right. A record button if you wanted to connect your camera to the gimbal. On this side, you have a little menu button, a power switch, and then on the other side, you have zoom controls. So you can go wide or telephoto, if you connect your, to your camera through the USB-C port. You also have a little tripod mount for additional accessories, although I will say there's not a whole lot of room to mount a bunch of accessories. Trigger button on the front, and then finally a lock button for locking the axis um, and the gimbal in place. There's not a whole lot of room here. You kind of just hold it with one hand, which is perfect because it's a very small, very lightweight setup altogether. And then also you have a little micro USB port to connect to your camera if you decide to use that feature and control your camera from the buttons below. What's great about Zion gimbals is that they have an app and it's free to download for iPhone or Android. Now in a previous video I said that the app was great and someone flipped out in the comments section so in this video I'll say that the app is adequate. Uh, I actually like the way that it functions. It's relatively simple and easy to use and what's really cool about this gimbal is that right now I'm recording with the Zayun. In fact, my cameraman is using the Zayun Crane 3 Lab, which is huge and overkill, but I'm using the exact same settings from that Crane 3 Lab on this little M2 gimbal because the app recognized it and just applied my own personalized preset. So I used this setup on my trip out to Bend, Oregon for Condo 3.0. And it was great meeting a lot of subscribers and a lot of other YouTubers. Um, and I got a bunch of questions about this little setup, mostly from people who were like, whoa, what is this thing? And do I like it? 
So let's jump into some sample videos. Uh, here is some highlights, at least for me, of the trip and some sample videos of how stable this thing is with the A6400 and the stabilized 16 to 50 kit lens. Here you go. So that is it for the sample videos. And again, I cannot emphasize how much fun Condo 3.0 was. Uh, if you guys have an opportunity to go out there and uh, hang out with everyone who shoots Sony, most of them full frame shooters and photographers and professionals and wedding photographers, it is an amazing experience. I'll have a couple of videos coming up with uh, me trying out some lenses as well from the event. But let's get back into talking about this gimbal. Let's cut to the chase. It's not perfectly smooth. You could see that there is a little bit, a kind of side to side motion, uh, kind of like the camera is just a little bit too heavy for the gimbal itself, or maybe the motor in the back on this axis just isn't torquey enough. Um, now, if you use this with a lighter setup, I would probably guarantee that it wouldn't have such motion in the corners, but uh, for this setup, the A6400, especially with the microphone and the kit lens, it might be a touch too heavy. That being said, I can kind of forgive this little gimbal for that slight side to side shake just because it's almost as smooth as a lot of medium sized gimbals that I've tested, but it's so much smaller. I mean, look at the size of this. It really doesn't take up any more space than a normal like grip that you would use on the bottom of your uh, camera. Like if you had a little tripod, it would probably take up the exact amount of space as this little gimbal does. So while it's not perfectly smooth, it sure beats handheld video with an A6400 and even a stabilized lens. This definitely does stabilize your footage quite a bit, especially up and down. Uh, and even my steps were somewhat well damped with this little setup. You can also use it with just your regular old cell phone and all the accessories to do that are available. You can also mount a GoPro or an Osmo Action on this gimbal if you wanted to. So it's essentially kind of like you could say three gimbals in one because you can use it on three different devices and it will result in relatively stable footage. I mean, this is probably the worst example with a heavier body and camera setup. As far as negatives, there are a couple of things that I noticed with this gimbal. The first is something I already mentioned is that when you store it or when you try to make it compact for storage, uh, you really have to collapse 
and it messes up all of your settings. So when you balance your camera and your lens again, you are starting from zero. The second small thing I noticed is that the tripod bolt or screw on the bottom, I like that you can hand tighten it and hand loosen it. Unfortunately though, it just falls right through this base plate. So if you lose this uh, and you don't have one, you can't use this gimbal. The third issue is just because this gimbal is so compact, it's kind of difficult to get low angle shots because you don't have enough room on each one of these arms. Even rolling right here, you can see that it's touching there and it's almost touching on the other side. So I'd love to be able to use this gimbal with a lighter lens like the Sigma 56, which I'm using to record this video. Uh, it's not too much heavier than the kit lens, but when I tried using it, it just didn't work at all. Even as is, this is an interesting option for a gimbal, and I do appreciate it. I like the design, I like the fact that it's super compact, it's easy to use, it does a decent job. Like I said before, it keeps up with a lot of kind of mid-range gimbals out there. When you add in that the price is very low on this gimbal, it's hard not to recommend it. So that is going to be it for my review of this thing. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. Um, let me know down in the comments what you guys thought of its performance overall all what you think of the form factor as always if you are interested in purchasing this gimbal or reading more info about it or checking prices links will be down below in the description so definitely check those out thank you guys so much for all of your likes comments and support stay tuned for more and i will see you in the next video bye bye